Hey there, and welcome back to Off the Rails, an educational monster train series where we explore content mods for the game to shake things up. Alright, first off the rails, post 1,000 subscribers. I better do a good job here. Someone, someone challenged me in the comments to take this series to a 100 win streak. And the funny thing is, I would love to. But I'm also exploring things way too much. I mean, consider the recent run where I played Explosive Sentient, right? I don't. I didn't know if that would win. Is the problem now? Did it? We did win that run. But like for the instance, the last run we lost. We're on a zero win streak here, right? Our previous run was what was it with Sap Tethys, I believe. Yeah, we had Sap Tethys, and I. I overestimated her power early, right? The line ended up being strong, but my overestimation of it early resulted in me having to reset on Daedalus. It did go on to win from there, so it was a good lesson learned. But it's exactly the reason why I think it's a bit of a struggle, right? Trying to win every one of these. I'd like to. I certainly would. But I also, it's important to show it off. And the thing is, I actually don't think I'm going to be playing the unofficial balance patch for 100 runs straight. I don't know, I want to explore some other things. I noticed this this series gets the most viewership when I'm doing different things. Now, granted, there aren't a million different mods coming out, as much as I kind of wish there were, but there are enough. I think I have an idea for my next set. Right after I finish this 12 rotation, I'm going to do mono clan stuff. And that sounds fun. Maybe I'll do two sets of that. Just do 24 runs or something. That sounds like it would be really interesting. I have no idea how it would play. I'm so used to playing the game with, you know, a clan combo, right? You have the resources from the other clan. Trying to win C25 with a just like Hellhorned sounds tough. That sounds tough, right? Yeah, I think so. I don't know. But you also have twice as many chances to see the really good cards. Kind of interesting, and I suppose it makes your rare drafts really strong because there are only 8 cards to pick from instead of 16, but I don't know, it's a cool idea. I'm going to do that next. Anyway, I've kind of gone a little bit out of order here. I am playing the unofficial balance patch, which is something I maintain, so we're playing that for, I believe, another, what is it, 9 runs if you include today's? So, yeah, we're currently on Penumbra, back on the 0 and 0 grind zero win streak as it were but i think that's everything i've got for you so yeah without further ado let's get in on this as always do like comment and subscribe if you haven't already and let's send it right i am recording i always ask this nowadays this is my one moment to check because if i mess it up and i hit the depart button then i'm really screwed but it turns out we're okay and we're playing penumbra cool let's go All right, hope you're all doing well today. I'm having a good one. Nothing too crazy to report. I've been, I've been, I mentioned this in a few of my series, but I've been continuing the saga of working very diligently on my 5e campaign that I'm going to be running. So I've been recording in bursts and ultimately not recording every day for a little bit. That'll change in, I want to say, a couple weeks. I'm going to be starting that campaign, I think second or third week of February, which is pretty hype. I had to look at my calendar to see because I'm still trying to figure out a session zero timing, but I'm really looking forward to it. I'll be giving updates in the intros here and there. So if you're interested, keep asking me. But that's enough about that. Let's play Monster Train. We are default Umbra with default Stygian versus explosive Sigil Daedalus. This is Spell Shield Fell and Patient Seraph. Patient Seraph, huh? It's an okay one. Give me personal dust for something. Our starters are making of a morsel, ice tornado, and crucible extension. Crucible extension costing one, which means I actually have space accessible to me. Very cool. Seems good. Let's see what we're shown. Steel shop has an umbra banner, merchant of magic with the stygian banner. Second stygian banner and merchant of magic on ring three, hellvent opposite that, two temples. Let's see, Umber Banner on Ring 4. Hard to know direction. We do see a mix, though. It depends on if I see unit drafts or not. Ring 5. 
is our last temple. We do get screwed a little bit here, which is interesting. So I'll need to have my plan in place by ring five. There's also a removal dupe on ring seven, which I value highly. And our mid game has a decent mix of steel shops. It looks like three of them, in fact. Okay, I can work with that. Refracting lens or cleansing water. There's no universe I do not click refracting lens here, right? It's just so much healing and I can draft around the consumes. I do appreciate that, even if it has no value right now. Yeah, for sure. Let's see. I could pick Glutton. I, you know, the truth is, I actually think Glutton, I need to do something about this. I don't know. It's tough. I think Glutton is the worst path in the mod as well, because I didn't mod it, right? I didn't change it. My goal was ultimately to balance Umbra around Glutton's existence. So hopefully Umbra becomes better and therefore Glutton becomes better. But you can't upgrade your champion in the way you want to. So I don't actually think Glutton is very good. I might need to mod that more. I would, if, you're, if you're watching at this point, I would be interested in your opinions. If I were to change Glutton to improve Penumbra's performance on that path, what would you suggest I do? That's an interesting question. I don't know the answer to it. We'll call that the discussion question of the day. Uh, on the other hand, though, I am just clicking Monstrous. I think it's better. It has Lifesteal Baseline in the mod, which is great, and it never goes past four space, which I really appreciate. So that's excellent. Yeah, let's do it. Do I have pings? I didn't even look. I have Ice Tornadoes. I suppose they count. Kind of. On the one hand, I do want to focus on these temples if I can. But on the other, I think I could reasonably take this horde. That said, I don't have a great answer for a 9 by 2 I don't know. On the one hand, you could maybe see Founding Seal or something. But I don't know. I don't think it's worth it to take that risk. I'd rather slow burn it and then do shard upgrades at the temples. Because I only have three in this run, so I want to get value out of those when possible. And that could be things like, I don't know, Tendon Piercing, Ice Tornado or something, maybe. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, let's move on. I normally don't like upgrading Ice Tornado with big attacks like that. Because I'm taking the Invasion Trial, by the way. I don't like upgrading Ice Tornado like that because it falls off a cliff at the Divinity. Since the Divinity is always on your floor. Which is a big problem. I hate that a lot. See, that stops enough damage. We'll do work on the bottom floor now. Our, the lifesteal will keep us afloat for a while up top. Just give him a making of a morsel here. It's good. I'll take the double train steward middle. Sure. Okay. This will be fine. I'm going to hunt a little bit. Yeah, Damage Shield Morsel is superior here, I believe. I'm going to just play that Morsel downstairs. It's fine. Damage Shield is good. Let's see. This is a nice Ice Tornado, actually. Yeah, that saves a ton. We'll save this other Ice Tornado for the other man in the back here. I'm just going to play it right now. Great job. Cool. I'm pretty confident he 1v1s here, right? Yeah, totally. Totally. All right, good job. Nice and easy. Got the trial. No damage taken. Thank you, Trample Penumbra. Ooh. Packed Morsels is hasty for the Refracting Lens value. It's decent. I can grab an Umbra banner and not feel bad about it. Although, Immortal Trade is exceptional with Monstrous. I think I have to click Immortal Trade here. It's just so strong. I'm giving up a ping for it, but I think I need to. It's so good. Let's see. Titan's Gratitude, Crypt Builder, Offering Token. I could theoretically still go in Incant Line at some point. There's no reason not to grab the Offering Token here. It is just correct to have one. I'd love... Well, it's tough. What do you even get here from the banners? Let's look in the logbook real quick. Okay, so Umbra Banner says you get one of the doggo friends. 
okay, there's always the rare units. I'm not that excited about them. Shadow Eater is actually pretty good here. So is Alloy Construct. I would take either of them, I believe. They're a decent line. Let's see. The rares are, of course, a consideration. Morsel Maker is fine, I suppose. It's not my ideal choice. And I could grab a dog. It's not bad. The problem is, if I see something that I don't love for getting an infusion, I don't know. What might be even stronger is just the Stygian banner. Look for an Encanter. Go for the early... Yeah, go for the early temple hits, right? The, if I can get an early infusion of value, it's great. And then later on, I can take the three temp the three seal shops mid game, right? And look for upgrades for it, whatever it is. Okay, I'm gonna go to the right here. Merchant of Magic. It also lets me put a 20 in piercing into Frozen Lance, maybe, which is very good for refracting lens value. We don't see it. Permafrost, plus 10. The temple says a plus 30. Now, intrinsic. You could intrinsic Crucible extension. It's weird because I actually might consider that. That's basically a space. It's the same thing as Space Prism, just it can be played again later. Am I going to click Nameless Iron? Is she good enough here? Maybe, actually, right? Maybe. Hmm. I wonder if I could do Intrinsic Crucible Extension Siren behind... Does this work? Siren behind Penumbra? He gets big. He only takes four space. I don't think it's Sylvifite, right? I'm not scaling this thing in any meaningful way. I'm going to take the Siren. I think it's good. I am going to Intrinsic the Crucible extension so I can play them together. And I suppose I should take a minus one into something. I'm going to make the Crucible extension free, I suppose. I'm going to be playing it every turn. It may as well be free. If they showed me a holdover, what does it go into? That's a great question. I could freeze Immortal Trade. And then always have it for when I need it. It's kind of an interesting solution, right? Huh. I'm going to need to do something here. I have no upgrades I really want. And there's no steel shop for a while. I'm going to actually freeze Immortal Trade so I always have it when I want it. And we're going to chill on the rest of our money here. Okay. Already looking really weird, thanks to the mod, right? I'm, this whole line only works because Crucible Extension costs one and Penumbra doesn't get bigger. I'm not worried about this spikes, right? This doesn't bother me for a few reasons. Penumbra's probably going to just kill most things. And that's fine with me. Right? I can just do... Think about this. You Siren first. You Crucible Extension for the Incant. You play Penumbra. And I put the Frozen Lance in and we clear the floor. Okay. I want a train steward middle, and then I just frozen lance this floor up a bit. Sure. Okay, it's fine. We get the ice tornado here, which is solid. I'm gonna play it. I wanna kill that cursed person. Yeah. Not good. Oh, killing the back one's pretty decent. Well, not ideal. I didn't hit that good card. So, what are we taking? Some hits here, it looks like. Yeah, now I can maybe do better by doing Morsel Miner and then the Train Steward upstairs and feed this man. And then we drop him the Immortal Trade. And he should. He might actually kill. Wow. Yeah, you just drop in. You airdrop in the other train steward and we get this kill. That's extremely funny. Yeah, sure. Thanks, train steward. Good job. 
A little risky playing bottom like that, but, you know, fair. It ended up paying out. Prismal Dust, yes. I don't need the Space Prism, I already have the Immortal Trade. We click Prismal Dust into Patient every time, and I grab Crystallis, just the card I was looking for. Cool, cool, that feels pretty reasonable. Dupe. The dupe is if I want to self-infuse Siren. I don't think I do. I need to figure out an infusion line soon. What would I take instead? Shark? I would take a shark. That's true. What else? What else? I don't have great answers to this question. I think in practice right now, I might actually consider Siren's infusion into a sweeper, potentially. It's not bad. I think it's actually pretty decent. I can create a good... I can do a good line there, right? And then Penumbra can face tank for it. Okay, I'm gonna go... I'm gonna look left. We'll see. We'll see. I don't need this magic shop for anything, really. I mean, I guess double stack Prismal Dust is pretty good. I might consider that. Minus two, maybe? No? Ten and Piercing? No? I don't want these damage hits, I don't think. Okay, let's... See, we had this is a double stack plus 10. Give me a 20 and consume coward game. Guardian of the unnamed or another nameless siren. So I'm a little punished by not grabbing the sweeper first, though I think the siren was superior for that combat and in general. If I'm worried about top floor divinity, if I'm gonna play top floor divinity, then the guardian of the unnamed is superior here, right. That's true. That is just true. I mean, I will grab him. I think this is a fine line. This is like self-infused Siren of the Sea. Just looks different, basically. Right? And then we do guard into Siren right now. And we basically guarantee we win this next combat. Sure. I think that's fine. A minus one. I'm going to make... I should maybe consider this minus one double stack. Prismal Dust, it becomes an extremely good X5, maybe. That's true. I think I do want to double stack this. We're going to do that. In fact, yeah, that's... If they show me the goods, then I'm going to be very happy about that. Let's head in the caverns here. Oh, you know what? Yeah, just make my dude small. It's basically multi-strike. I now have two of them, and we're fine. Yeah, okay. All right, cool. Minor Refraction. That was another good hit. Awesome. Thanks for the free multi-strike video game. I don't even have to look at a shop for it. I mean, I'll still look at another shop, but that's a really good hit. Someone asked me recently why I don't like Pyrestone housing in the start of runs. It doesn't even matter here. I don't have it, but it's because of things like that. You see just like an upgrade show up like that, and suddenly you're still... You may, you may already have that third slot filled. You might not even realize it. It can be annoying. We're, we're pretty strong now. I can even feed him morsels at this point, which is great. Let's go ahead and move on. Daedalus, all right, let's go, friend. Yeah, now that, that hit helps a lot into not only this combat, but just the game itself, because it gives me a really good target for this removal dupe on seven. I could theoretically wait longer, but I would love to use and take advantage of that. So I'm pretty likely to go that route. Yeah, because look at this. I can now do... What am I doing? I want to avoid the Ember Drain more than I want the Incant, right? So you do... Math, right. It's making first... Penumbra. Ah, dang. Missed an incant this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. True. True enough. It's fine. Yep, that's true. Ah, I could have gotten one more incant. Oh, no. I'm throwing. Am I going to play this Crystallis? Yeah, I am. I'm not so concerned about the incants. I do need to get a lot of zero costers now, though. Things like... Just take whatever morsel it is and then shoot here and it's fine. 
right? Yeah, this is just superior. It also saves the life steal, which I love. That's good. Especially because we're getting a bomb here. Sweet. Now, it's a pretty good Prismal Dust. I can just take six here. Where are you taking this one from? Oh, the stupid spikes. You're going to waste all your stuff on the spikes here. So, in that case, I would rather save it for Relentless. We play the Ice Tornado here. Sure. We'll have a chance to do this later. Not worried about it. Cool. Making of a morsel, a good frozen lance. We're taking some hits, I suppose. Oh, dang that. I should have realized it was the upgraded sweeper. It kills my man, right? So I could play this. I should, right? This is what? 20 something chilling left over. That comes close. It doesn't get the kill, though, unfortunately. Yeah, true. Eh, take nine. Not ideal. I get some of that back, at least. Which is good. I could have played the Ice Tornado and gotten out of that, though, is an important consideration. I'll just take the Incants at this point. I actually think it's superior. Yeah. It's, there's no way that Penumbra lives through this unless I see that immortal trait again, right? True. We get through it off the back of some truly weird choices, but it's okay, right? We face tank one of these, we get another round, it's good. Like, we're okay. I should have maybe... I don't know. I could have maybe cleaned up that Relentless by saving that Immortal Trade for a little longer, or at least putting it into Penumbra instead, but I had no doubts about hitting that number anyway, so it's kind of irrelevant. I'm going to take Forever Consume because it can be played at zero cost and is pretty decent. Gifts for a Guard pushes out a ton of Refracting Lens value. I didn't redraw my stupid Prismal Dust, by the way. That's an unfortunate circumstance. I didn't get that five back. Yeah, shame. Yeah, like, this is a little late for Shadow Eater, I think. We're good. We have our line. We skip this, right? Yeah. All right, cool. We're fine. I feel reasonably good about this choice. Now, I could take space still anyway and get the morsel value with these making of a morsels. I don't know. It doesn't seem that great, though. I'm going to take draw first, and we'll see if we hit something that gives me ember or space later. I'm going to go left. Removal's good. I can look at a merchant of steel. I can afford everything. Yeah, that's fine. Endless. Not what you'd like to see. Monstrous 2. Actually, this could realistically be the architect pivot, right? It adds space, which lets me play a third one, and it resolves to apply rage to the floor. The problem is I'm a little bit relying on monstrous to be tanking for me. That's actually interesting. This is a great argu argument for Architect, but I think the problem is I need Monstrous to live longer. So I'm going to take Monstrous 3 to get him up to 100 life, right? Yeah, I think that is the play, actually. Interesting consideration, though, right? I think you could have gone that reasonably if I had a different line here. Oh, look, Morsel Master Crucible Collector. Thank you for 10 gold. Poo, buddy. All right. Endless, not it. I'm going to reroll. Large. That seems unfortunate. I'm going to tunnel the steel shops because I would like to see any kind of upgrade that makes me happy here. Let's see. I can buy a removal, I think, and still have enough cash to reroll the next shop. You get 75 here. It's barely enough. Right? 60, I go to 105. I can go 180. Assuming there's nothing there. It is stronger to do this removal now, so I will take it, though. Get rid of a train steward. Am I strong enough to take the horde? Go to 50? I don't think so, actually, right? I get, I get kind of blasted with only 50 life. Well, no, it's enough to get through a 
Pyre Light Master. Eh, just hell with it. Look at that. Pyre Stone Housing. Call the shots. Capricious Reflection is pretty good here, actually. It's early enough, I don't mind. Eh, fair enough, actually. Capricious Reflection, sure. I think it's better than Pyre Stone Housing here. Although I am going to two Steel Shops. Take a 25 Lifer or something. All right, Pyre Stone Housing. It's a good position for it. Let's move. Ancient Hate. Ancient Hate. Clipped. Let's see. I'm only hitting twice on the floor. The trample is in front. I'm taking hits here, right? No matter what. Guaranteed to if I take this, right? Because I could solve this problem with the Ice Tornado. But I am accepting Pyre Damage. Also, upgraded clip reflectors. We don't clear them. I take a lot of damage for this. Also, Pyre Light Master. I'm going to get blasted. Let's respect. I, I don't think I need this cash that badly. I get enough out of this combat to afford the reroll. And frankly, that's all I need. So let's respect a little. This lets me play the Ice Tornadoes, which I think do matter. Now, let's not mess this up this time. You Shade Splitter. I give up that one for sure. I then play the Siren, and then I Crucible Extension, and we Penumbra. Now, I could have played bottom. You're absolutely correct. I could have played bottom here. I don't think it's correct. Right? We just kill a man? Do you ever just kill a man? It's a really good forever consumed, huh? It just kills Eclipse Guardian. No upgrades in the first two means I'm screwed, by the way. Who, buddy. That is... How do we say? Not good. Now, I could clean this floor up in the middle by just taking the incants. Yeah, so you do actually Frozen Lance. Frozen Lance. Forever consumed middle. That's 62 on the floor now. I'm going to save the Immortal trade. I mean, actually, I redraw fast enough. I should play it for the incant. Yeah, actually. It's fine. Yeah, this wave's tough. Okay, we're going to Offering Token out something here. Right. I think I do need to play Ice Tornado middle. I'm not dealing with that 9-2 yet. I should save. So I should make sure I'm getting this incant though, right? So I play the Ice Tornado next turn. Although I could get the Prismal Dust next turn if I do it the other way, right? I'm guaranteed to see it regardless. Well, there's an Ice Tornado next turn as well if I have to. So let me explain the two lines here. You Ice Tornado middle now, which spends which wastes two in three incants actually so you slow down your siren a lot okay the upside is you get a big prismal dust next turn okay now i should still redraw in time for that prismal dust because i have the draw relic okay the alternative is i play three spells up top or honestly i don't i can't do that right 72 hp on the floor Ooh. i can do what one incant here because of the clipped reflector. So actually, we just ice tornado middle. And we're fine. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Sure. Alright, now... I would like very much to Crystallis middle now that I have it. We'll take the Shade Splitter up top. And play it out. I think we're in a little bit of a tough spot here. Damage is good. I need to not eat a whopping 36 from this man. So we take the Crystallis here. I'm reasonably confident. Let's see. I can take three incants, which is 12 more damage, which puts him at 119 taken. 
which is 36 left over. Shame. So that doesn't work in my favor then. This next floor is going to destroy me too. We got an upgrade reflector. Spell shield. I'm just eating that whole floor. That sucks. Yeah, I don't think it's... Oh, man, I think I have to play this Prismal Dust now, or else I don't see it. Three turns, right? I'm gonna... That's tough. I'm gonna... Oh, that Lifesteal Morsel's good. I'm just gonna burn this Prismal Dust for an incant here. It's fine. I need that... I need that HP. Right? We did manage to get it under the threshold thanks to the Frozen Lands, which was good. Top is crunching me in a major way. I can play one spell and get away with it. Instead, I'm going to Ice Tornado downstairs. Good. Hitting the back two is really critical. I, I accept everything up here. We don't die. This combat was not good. Okay. Extension, offering token, good. I want to play every single incant that the game will let me except I'm also hitting this man for 40 because I would like to not lose cool I think we get through this by the skin of our teeth thanks to the immortal trade yeah we do cool great job let's see I can blast out some incants here but that did not seem very promising to me right it was a very tough combat 32 taken not good. Not good at all. Engine upgrade is a good solution to... What? <laughs> it's a good solution to Ember, I suppose. It's also a consume spell. I should value that for refracting lens. I'm going to click it. I'll take an unnamed tome into patient. Absolutely. Although drain with that targeted discard is pretty tasty. It's just an unnamed tome here. Give me more consume cards to offset that insane amount of damage I just took. And we're going to the Merchant of Steel, as I said. We got the Collector, which is nice. Endless Incant Armor 2. Nope. Again, nope. I am still tunnel visioning the Steel Shops. I don't need anything else from that other side, so fine. Remove a Train Steward. I probably remove a Fro uh, Ice Tornado because it's really hard to play two of these. I guess it does kind of remove itself from my deck on first draw through, though, just by existing. That's true. I should still cut one, I think, right? Shade Splitter is marginally worse here, I believe. 20 and consume into the others. Yeah, actually, I... it's tough. I'm going to hold on to the Ice Thorn. No, I should remove one. Yeah, we'll get rid of one. Last temple, last opportunity. All plus 30s, apparently. You could actually 10 in piercing the forever consume. That's pretty strong. Like, no joke. No joke, that's pretty good. You just send the front, dude. Three ember kills the steel wings. It's a lot of ember, but... I could give it a minus one, and then it's two ember. It's pretty decent. I'm gonna make it piercing. I think that's pretty solid here, actually. Stay at 60 here. Don't take more. And the temple... The shop, rather, is trash. If I miss multi-strike, I don't really mind, but I'm not strong right now. Crystal Cloak. I can take the Mark of Invasion here, no problem. It's fine. Now, Crystal Cloak, I need to save that damage shield for it, is what I need to do. Same deal as usual. We take the Miner first, accepting... Accepting everything, right. Extension, Penumbra, we play Crucible Extension, Engine Upgrade, and Bottom, I suppose. Take that 5 HP, thank you. Okay, getting some HP into our lad, good. Just take Incants on this turn, I think that is value. Just Incant. It will be nice having... should maybe consider saving the damage mor shield morsel, but it's fine. Maybe. I don't know. That's a lot of damage incoming, actually. Ooh, buddy. I'm going to play the Ice Tornado here. I think I need to. 
Ooh, rough, huh? Not good. I need to save the Prismal Dust. I need to save this man's HP, though, more than anything else. So we chill on that. Because we're just going to eat it, all right? I mean, I don't have many options here. I, If I play Forever Consumed at zero, it pops the Defender, which is 60 HP, which is big. So... Let's just incant up here. I am just going to play the unnamed tome here. I don't really care that much. It's hidden assault and it's crystal cloak, so whatever. Just go for. Hey, we like that. Now, I've got 45 damage coming in, right, on this next turn. So he's dead if I don't play this Immortal Trade right now. Let's do it. I need to keep him alive. Uh, he matters a lot. Now that does hurt my... Fro my little, what's my friend named Prismal Dust? But it's okay. I'm going to look for a Shade Splitter here. The Rubble Morsel is better. I'll play the other one downstairs. We are just going to incant up here. Am I? It's only two damage it changes. Yeah, I'm gonna just keep incanting, it's fine. Okay, all right, Crystal Cloak. Crucible Extension. I want an Ice Tornado downstairs. It's fine. And we take the Miner. Okay, now I need to deal with that other Backliner, right? Offering Token, Frozen Lance out. We just play Prismal Dust for 8 here. Yeah, that's how you get through Crystal Cloak. And if I hit Frost Frozen Tornado thing or whatever the heck, we're fine. We're in good shape, huh? Yeah, we're fine. Very cool. Yeah, because this first round is blocked all in this, and then he doesn't even get through the damage shield here, right? Yeah, cool. Or he does, but we have that life steal for once that's over. Good. Cool. Kindle is marginally interesting to me for a bigger Prismal Dust turn. It's also, it's frozen and it's a good refracting lens hit. Yeah, we'll take it. Let's get Kindle in here, right? I think that's good. Caven is marginally curious to me, right? You get that daze. Could be good. It could be good. I'm not, I don't know about that. Maybe. I think the Kindle makes more sense to me here. I have to think a little bit about when do I take that that Ember Drain AoE days. It seems really strong, but it also seems like I can't really play it on my floor that often without... I'll have to think about that more. This is a moment where I'm definitely... I feel more confident in the base game because I know the run so well. I know the, I know the lines, right? Whereas this is... Tricky. It's a very interesting setup. It might not be optimal, but it also might have been really good. I don't, I don't know. Second unnamed tome. Sure. You know, I would have considered maybe duping it randomly just to hit it on patient sooner, since it's not like I can see another intrinsic in this run. Having two of them is good, though, and it's also more refracting lens value, which I value quite a bit. Steel shop. As was foretold. Hammered chest plates. You might as well, right? It's better than token of a trader here. And large zone. Could do. I should grab Incan Armor 2 here because I'm never seeing a, another one here, right? Yeah, that's good. We'll take that and I'm going to reroll you. Yeah, I mean, I guess kind of just sucks, right? Kind of just sucks. Gross. Well, I think I should fill this slot. And these are really weak, though, right? It's really weak. I don't really mind terribly much. Ah, it's tough. I need to dupe it on ring seven no matter what. The thing is, is like, this plus 25 is decent, but I grabbed a... If I had two slots on this, right... I think settling for the Incan Armor 2 would have been fine. Settling for a plus 25 would have been fine. 
But if I'm walking into the ring seven and I do with an open slot, I think I'm actually okay with that because I can take a space, right? And then just dupe it again. Have three of them on my floor, super tanky. I'm gonna wait, actually, right? Remove what? A shade splitter, I think. Just turn around my cards faster. Yeah, I mean, I'll kick a card. There's no reason not to. 60, I'm doing double dupes, so that's 90. I can take a relic, that's 105. We're okay on shards, so okay. 60 into fell is fine. I feel reasonably confident about this because we're refining our incant strategy here in a very reasonable way, right? I'm a little more confident in how, how you play this, right? It's Nameless Siren, Crucible Extension, Penumbra, Incant, cool. Seems good, we just send it on Incants, pretty much. Don't play that Prismal Dust yet, that card matters. We're fine, we just take Shade Splitter. Honestly, I'm looking for Incant Density here, so... I'm going to take the Attack Morsel here. Frozen Lance, Frozen Lance. I will redraw Immortal Trade. Let's see. Next turn can be played at fairly low Ember without too much cost. Playing this Immortal Trade on him is actually really good. Is that correct? The thing is, is that represents five rounds of lifesteal for him, which is very good powerful next turn that means i get what one two ember thanks to engine upgrade so i could do it basically a zero cost kindle right it does nothing it's you pay one but you get double so you get one back so it's a free incant but i can i can sit on it right and make a bigger prismal this turn yeah i'm gonna immortal trade here i think this is super correct yeah it puts me in a much better position for something like this, right? Now, if I hit him for only 10 damage, he goes to... What does he go? He goes to... Oh, he goes to... Yeah, actually, we're super fine, right? You play the making of a morsel, and then you forever consume here, and we kill both. Yeah, because that means Penumbra kills... Clipped Reflector and the 50 kills the Marksman. And now the Kindle chills in our hand until I get the big turn. We should unname Tome this first. Then we just incant up. I'm leaking a fair bit here. I think I do have to play the Crystallis again. Yeah, I think so. In order to make sure I actually kill because I need Trample Penumbra's effect. Yeah, true. Now, is this it? No, it's not it. I play Forever Consumed at... What? Let's see. Obviously, I kill if I play it like this, but this is overkill, right? We're doing 175, 165 to the floor, it looks like, actually. Yeah, 165 to the floor. That pushes 60 over. That means I can play a Shade Splitter. That's worth it. And then we kill this man, and it's the same either way, right? Doesn't actually change anything because I am wasting a bunch of damage. 25, technically, right? Yeah. So let's say I forever consumed at 90. He has 15, 25, right? So it bleeds through. Huh. <sighs> Let's see, two less than 100, so it's 98, so what, 23? 23 plus 67. We don't kill that back, dude. So I'm just going to, I think, this is one of those moments. Should I just get out the calculator? Yes, I should. All right. 
This is me competing with myself. I'm trying to make sure I move quickly, but I also want to make sure this works out. So if I spend one more ember for one more incant, right? We go up, we get four extra damage in the mid here, which would take me to 75 in the back. This dude has 115. So 115 minus 75. I need to do 40. Right? And that's 40 that has to trample through from Penumbra. And this is doing 90 right now. If I play a spell, I'm good, actually. Right? Especially with the Frozen Lance play. Yeah. Cool. We're good. I had to think about that briefly, but we're fine. I could play the Immortal Trade, but I don't have to make that decision now. In fact, I want to do it next turn after I play the Prismal Dust, ideally. Yes. Good. Okay. All right. So first things first, we kindle. I want to end at six. Okay. That's a good amount. Now, I think I need to put this 12 into the siren here. Yes. Oh, I need to play a Frozen Lance first, actually, right? Oh, I do. I do. I have to play a Frozen Lance. It pushes like 80 something through. Yeah, I do. All right, fine. Oh, I could actually kill this thing, right? It's gaining what? That number is it's at 115. We do, we do kill it in one swing, right? Ah, it's this is fine, right? You just do this, and then you play the Immortal Trade here, and it's good because now I can maybe redraw the Immortal Trade, and I take a decent chunk, but it's not the end times. Ah, this is annoying, right? Frozen Lance gets the kill. It's fine, we'll still take the Morsel Miner here. That's okay. Thank you, Trample Penumbra, by the way. Big fan of how that turned out. Just incant, I suppose. It's fine. We kill that man, no problem. I think we get through this, right? Oof. It ain't pretty. But it doesn't have to be. It just needs to win the video game. And it does. Go to hell, fell. Okay, the run should look a lot stronger after this point because I get another Siren, <laughs> right? Shroud Spike. I like Shroud Spike. That's another really good payout for Kindle or just good payout in general. I can play a Morsel and spike it and that's strong. The Furnace Tap is also pretty good. It turns out we do like Furnace Tap. I'm not seeing a Steel, um, I mean a Magic Shop though, right? Because I want to see double dupes. So we're looking for a card I don't mind just playing whenever the heck. Furnace Tap is hard to play without Frozen or something similar. Shroud Spike I could probably just yeet on a random turn and do okay. As long as I have a Morsel. Which I suppose I always will have, right? My next removals are Frozen Lances, so I think it's fine. Yeah, all right. Shroud Spike, sure, why not? Now, space. Good. I think it is space. I have the engine upgrade. Space means I can play two of them, no problem. Yeah, and then the third one, I don't know. That's a, that's a consideration for the future. We go left. Removal dupe. Big value. Heck yeah. Horde, show me the goods. Mind jacks. I play mid floor. That's really strong. Also abandoned in Tumber with that Shroud Spike I just picked up. Pretty decent. Although that's going to kind of flood me a little. I think Mind jacks is superior, right? That's four plus one. That's five. Seven on mid floor is enough to just natively play three sirens behind penumbra yeah all right cool we like that we now cut two frozen lances they're pretty rough and the dupe is on the siren yes please 
we upgrade Penumbra, Monstrous 3. Again with the Architect Pivot, but I don't think so. I need the big HP pool, and you've seen this. That 170, that, that number's gonna matter. We at least now have multi-strike effectively, so that's good. I don't care about spikes unless I leak. So I kind of care about spikes is what you're telling me? How do I deal with a 290? A lot of incants, I suppose. I have the refracting lens. I can take this trade, I think. I will take some damage for this. I'm reasonably confident, especially if I get a bad turn one. Well, it's a good turn one. That's kind of nice, right? We only got the conduit upgrade. Let's see, six. I go to seven here. So I can freely play top floor. Yeah, true. I had to check real quick to make sure I was not crazy. I'm not. Also, thank you forever consumed. You're a bro. Just kill that man in front. You'll love to see it. Is there any trick to hitting that collector? Ice tornado off the top, but then I don't play my siren. I mean, that's just wrong. I will save the Ember Drain again, I believe. I think it matters, right? I think so. Start incanting. Goodbye, Collector. Alright, we're going to take some trades here, I'm pretty sure. I don't have to play this Immortal Trade now, because I have one more turn before I draw through. It's definitely Crystallis. That saves a lot here. I would like a Morsel. Sure, that's good. We'll take it. He's only taking that 10 here thanks to that lifesteal, so we're fine on that. Good, give me that engine upgrade, please. I could have done a spike here, right? But I don't think that's correct yet. Uh, it is Immortal Trades time to shine, though, by the way. Reasonably confident in that here. And then it's... Making of a morsel. Yeah, it gets that kill, which I like. I can actually spike this morsel, and that's pretty decent. I should... I'll take the one spike, actually. Yeah, that's fine. Sure. Gets me up to max HP on the pyre, which is good. I have a lot of consume cards just chilling in the wings here. So... One of these is definitely unnamed tome, right? True. We should draw first, maybe. Crystallis. It doesn't save much, right? It only saves 18 here for two incants. Whereas I get double incant value by playing it otherwise. Now, this is, is this an unnamed tome turn? It might be. It's a pretty decent unnamed tome turn. Sure, I'll take it. We play the Frozen Lance... I guess it's six more damage than the making of a morsel, potentially. We're going to take some swings from this uh, Yawn Gilded Wings. We just accept that. So I think it's fine. We'll just take the trade here. I will take the Forever Consumed here. Let's see if I... I get another, what, eight damage if I play... The Immortal Trade. Man, two incants. If I had committed the Kindle here, I think I actually killed this Guild of Wings. But I think we have enough consume cards. I don't mind taking this trade, right? Now, like, think about this. We take a whole huge chunk here, but it's, it's okay, right? Just go, what, Crucible Extension, Kindle. I think we have to Prismal Dust the middle here because of all of the damage we're taking otherwise. Now, I am eating a bunch still. 290. I think I have to play the Size Tornado, actually. Yeah, I think I definitely did have to do that. Oh, God. There's a conduit behind that boss. Oh, God. Oh, no. 
He doesn't get one shot, right? Oh, it's close. Oh god, play the immortal trade, actually. This super matters. And we just play the Prismal Dust here for Incant and value in general. Oof, buddy. Oh, buddy, that's not good. Take the Shade Splitters here. We just need to get strength, I think. Let's take the Incant. Ooh, friendo. That lifesteal is going to be good. Ooh, saved by lifesteal. My man's taken 98 a turn. You know, casual. Just casual. Play the unnamed tome for the heal. Pretty strong, actually. Right? I mean, if you look at the floor, it looks like we're not taking any hits. But we totally are. We got through all of our consumers as well. So I traded 16 here. I think I'm okay with that, right? Thanks, Penumbra. Took seven overall. I'll take seven here for that 400 gold. That's good. Another Kindle? You set up the crazy turn? You technically only have to draw it once. Yeah, all right. Double Kindle. All Kindle all the time. Preserve. Ooh. So many frozen cards. Yeah, preserve. I can freeze the prismal dust and other things. We go left here. Depending on what we're shown, I could reasonably dupe either the prismal dust or a siren. But we're always going left for sure. Give me a multi-strike video game. We just take a plus 25 into one of these for sure. Because you're never seeing two multi-strikes here. We spin it. Just no multi-strikes on the run, which is fine, I suppose. Some plus 50, 50 HP critters running around. It's a little unfortunate, but we did get the upgrade on them, though. Totem Fragment with my one Helical Crystallis. Mask of Penumbra is just a draw relic most of the time. Reroll it. Oh, Titan's Claws, huh? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's value because it makes these Kindles really good. Okay. Okay, Titan's Claws. Now, the real question. I think I have to have a third Siren or I lose because I didn't hit a multi-strike. So we're kind of just hoping we hit one of our patient solutions early, basically. Okay. And now this last 290, I think, is a removal. I just need to draw around into morsel tanks fast enough. That's true, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we cut a frozen lance. I can't cut another one by 10 gold. 10 measly gold. And it's not worth the 10 shards to do this, huh? No, I don't think so. Wow, feels bad. Maybe it's worth it to pick up one of these tempered talisman on what? That's that's a rough purchase, huh? Raider's Quill. Not terrible, actually. Maybe helps early. Sure, I actually think this 10 shards is enough value for the Trader's Quill pickup. That, that puts that extra money to good use. So we'll move on. 115 out of 100. Yeah, okay, patient. I don't feel great. Yeah, I don't feel great, but I feel okay. I feel okay. Now, I could just see a tome on turn one, and I feel pretty darn decent about it. Or not, you know. How much space do I need? I have six on a floor. I can put seven space down. I don't get the... Well, I can't do the Shroud Spike anyway since I drew a turn one. So here's the deal. I'm going to just do top floor here. Because I don't feel like encanting or rallying him so high. So you play both of these Sirens... We take the Crucible extension, and then we put Penumbra in front and just hope we don't lose. Haha. -ha. All right, Tome. Tome one, good. 
good. We get the siren down as well. Good. That order matters, by the way, so I can freeze. I mean, uh, so I can silence Seraph. Right? That just super matters. Take the incant. Every incant is going to matter. Yeah. We have lifesteal to sustain us for now, which is great news. Shade splitter. Now... Ah, oh, that Kindle proving valuable. What do I want to do here? I could freeze the making of a morsel, the the morsel itself, for when I have the extra space from something else, right? Or I can save this for the Prismal Dust itself, go for the super turn. The problem is his life, his HP gets chewed up. He, I don't want to play the prismal dust yet because he we don't have quick right so i think the play is you making of a morsel and then we preserve the miner and then we just simply frozen lance out this is good for a few reasons because ooh, that's bad so what you do is you hey we're taking too much damage on this turn huh yeah so you unnamed tome first basically Right, they should kill the front dude, and then we live, and then we play the immortal trade, and he lives. So that's good. Now, I do get the engine upgrade middle, which is solid. It puts some damage into that gilded wings, which I appreciate. And we just need to keep incanting, right? We just have to keep doing it. Now, I did hit that prismal dust. I don't mind. I was never going to play it next turn anyway, and I knew it was coming up. I kind of wish I hadn't hit it, though. But that's okay. We're fine. Immortal trade saving the day, actually. Is this the Prismal Dust turn? No. In fact, I kind of wish I had hit things in a different order because I don't have the space on this floor for the Shroud Spike either. Shame. Now, I do also just need to incant on this turn, right? That's true. So it's Ice Tornado here because it saves the back line a lot. And we just do our best. Right. Oh, I get the Preserve out on the Prismal Dust, maybe? Or on the Shroud Spike first. It's the Shroud Spike, right? Yeah, every time. Cool. Now, if I can... Uh, by the way, Trader Squill doing work. Yeah, so here it is. You Crucible Extension, the Offering Token, I, I do the Kindle Kindle here, right? You do Kindle, Kindle, big value. You play the Miner, you then Shroud Spike our man up to 314, which is extremely powerful. And then we send it on an immortal trade and our man now does not die. Cool, that's pretty good. That should be enough for this, this combat, right? And we just keep playing Morsel Miners at this point. Just keep incanting because we're okay. I think we've gotten through this combat now because our man hits so hard. Cool, actually, cool. I would like to save my next rounds a bit for, where is it? The Prismal Dust. So I don't want to play this Immortal Trade yet, is what I'm saying. And I may as well preserve the Deadweight here since I'm redrawing anyway. I'd like to not have it in the pool. And I should be able to offering token out something, because I'm just going to, what? Eight Prismal Dust in the middle here. Forever Consumed. There's little value in doing the Immortal Trade now since I don't redraw, so we just chill. I'm reasonably confident our 320 damage man in front is going to kill, right? Yeah, he, he just chews through everything. Let's see what the incant situation looks like, though, right? They're not hitting that hard, admittedly. 
This has kind of all become a little bit of a penumbra run, but that's okay. Now, we had the tools for patient. Now the question is, do I have the tools for the divinity? Am I gonna be able to do that fast enough? I don't know. I just do not know. So we'll see, we'll, we'll have to see. I don't know if this is a winning line. That is all three of my sirens on turn one. Which means I can actually play mid floor pretty cozy, I think. Right? Like you could argue I should draw first, but I'm I doesn't matter. Oh, that's a good hit. Hit that dead weight. Like there's no way I delay. I have to play all three of my sirens. Like, it just is a true statement. Yeah, so check this. You do making of a morsel here. We're going to then shroud spike off the bat. No, I think I'm going to preserve the Shroud Spike, actually. And I'm going to just incant up here. We're going to play the Immortal Trade because I think it matters. And we take the Frozen Lance. We kill one extra dude here, which is something. I'm going to save this Unnamed Tome. I'm going to take the incant here. The more incants I can get, the better, right? There's just no way around it. Yeah. If I end up taking a little bit of chip here, I'm okay with it as we ramp, right? We've got one more unnamed tome. Right, this is tough now. I need to incant very badly. This man, this light wings, that's probably too much chip damage. Let's just be real about it. That's a lot of chip damage to be taking here. That is a ton of chip damage to be taking. Oh, I need to save this unnamed tome because I might not draw the other one. So what you do first is you... You play the morsel. Okay, it's the Prismal Dust. Not ideal, right? This forever consumed, it trades. It's fine. We're eating dirt from this floor. We're just gonna have to accept some damage and then believe in the power of refracting lens because we're not there yet, champ. We are not there yet. That top floor is killing me. Unnamed Tome, please. Thank you. Good. Gross. I think I do have to play the engine upgrade. That is a fair point. I'm just eating dirt a little bit, huh? Okay, getting that Kindle in, in my hand is good. Oh, I'm taking a ton of damage up top here. Yeah, I just dirt, eat dirt. Okay, all right. Is this the turn of destiny? It could be. I don't think I have a choice. We're sending it. It's Kindle, Kindle. And then I have to play the Shade Splitter now. Rubble Morsel? Fine. Right? It's not great, but it's gonna have to do. Like, defensively, this looks pretty decent, right? That's an interesting takeaway, right? Take the other Shade Splitter here. Am I dead from upstairs? Maybe. I mean, this is 58 damage shield. He's not gonna die. So now the only question is, do I ever win this combat? Right? This is a lot of defense, is the thing. But I, I didn't get the good spike. And how much am I taking upstairs? This is so much damage, right? 
I think you have to ice tornado that, right? I mean, how am I not dying to the Inquisitor? What am I actually doing on this run? I think I have to do things like the Crystallis here. There's no world I don't, right? Like, that is correct. He has 630. He's taking... I mean, he hits me, like, four times. Right? Ice tornado, and then you just hit the Divinity, like, a million times, and you lose. I have to play this top, right? Yeah, a single hit on the clip of Guardian in the middle, I think, is matters a lot. It's tough, man. I think I need to incant. I don't think there's a way around it at this point, right? We just need the big numbers here. You just play everything, and we hope for the best. I don't think we win. Right? I mean, I'm taking, what, three, four hits from upstairs, which is 80. I'm just dead on here, aren't I? Wow. Yeah. True. True. Think about the numbers here. I mean, yeah, you're just dead, actually. 10, 120. Yeah, 30, and then 40, so that's 70. 75 and then 9 it's 84 i take 84 on this floor so i am just dead here as it turns out this is tough let's play top floor i i don't know this is a really bad run this is this is so weird because i'm doing the things very differently than i normally would the mod is tough you know, the mod is, is just difficult, right? I, I don't really have anything else I can say about it. Right? Mod is just tricksy. I don't know. This gives you time, but I don't know if it's good, right? Like, you have to do preserve on the shroud spike here. You have to play the making of a morsel, and we have to just incant because if I don't we're really screwed right I don't think this doesn't feel stronger is my main concern right I think you have to play immortal trade or you lose he only has 74 going into this next floor he just dies he keels over actually true that's true. And now the morsels are basically like just dead. The thing is, and I'm spending all of my incants trying to stay ahead of the big damage from the divinity. I don't know. I wanted to play middle, but I guess it was too slow and I didn't high roll a multi strike. So my big, what am I, this, this line is not good is what I'm finding out. This whole penumbra tank and then you try to do something behind it. Right? It's, it's not good enough, is the problem. We needed something else here. Okay. Yeah, okay. Fair. You know, fair. I need to... I value incants is the problem. The incants are the best pick here. So I need to take a Shade Splitter, because I want to play the Morsel on another floor. The draw card. Yeah, the Immortal Trade must come down. There's no getting around it here. And we need to just incant. The Crystallis is a pretty decent play, right? It pushes a lot of damage through. It probably stops this six in the back, but it gives up an incant. And I think the incant actually just matters more. But what would I be playing here anyway? All of these are either cards I save or something else. Yeah, so you actually do just Crystallis here. It's fine. And then you finish with the... Forever consumed. True. True. Yeah, fair. Okay. Sure, man. Sure. Yeah, I don't like this. Don't like this one bit. How, how do you not lose on this turn, right? You just eat this man entirely. I think you have to play the engine upgrade bottom here I just have to I need that ember very badly and I can't play anything else so I still just eat it here 
it's a very bad turn, right? I take even more damage that way. True. It's always an unnamed tome here. Every time. It's always an ice tornado here every time. You do the Shade Splitter first. See what you draw. It's the Prismal Dust. It's not my pick here. I, I basically have, I put myself in a position where I have to get a good Shroud Spike or I lose is the big issue. I don't think I win from this position, right? Ever? Again, I'm actually just dead here, right? I'm taking 55 from the middle guy. So you, you pretty much have to send it, right? There's just no way around it. That pushes 60 through, so now I'm not dead. I take 33, 36, 42. I guess I'm not dead yet. All right, fine. I think this loses. Yeah, I, I'm pretty, I'm reasonably confident this loses from this position, right? I had to burn too many resources there. I haven't hit the extra space, right? I didn't hit the Crucible extension, so I can't push out the numbers I need to win. So what? It's Crystallis forever. It's actually, you might live by doing Kindle here, and then you get the, you double Kindle out a big forever consumed, and he lives, and he dies. But now your Shroud Spike has been neutered. Uh, yeah, fair. It's true. I mean, I'm, I'm dead now. Right, there's just, there's no getting around it here. Yeah, we don't push it. So... This is a bad run. What did I... We'll talk it through the run summary, but I think I, I genuinely just lose here. I, I think I should have recognized the architect pivot might have helped my scaling a little more. And honestly, I was relying too much on Penumbra for everything in this run. This super loses, right? It makes sense too. Yeah, all right, we're going to call the loss here. I'm fine with this. It's unfortunate, but but yeah. I, there's nothing else I really could do, I don't think, from this stage. There's no replay value that I think provides the win. The, the mod is tough, you know? The mod is tough. You might ask, how do you win this normally otherwise? And the answer is, you, the run just looks so different, right? I, like, I don't have these Kindles because they're uncommons here. So who knows, what do I even draft in that position? The RNG on the cards is all different. I might not have seen the same things. The shops would have been the same, but like these sirens are fine. They're a bit slow, but you would have just played Penumbra on a lower floor. You would have had these sirens up top. They might have been infused into a sweeper or something instead. The run just looks so different. It's really hard to say this is what it would do instead. I wouldn't have this forever consumed. I don't even, I wouldn't have had an intrinsic crucible extension. This would have been a fun run to look at without the mod. But in the mod, I did not play this correctly. I'm trying to think what the right choice was actually here in the mod though, right? Think about this a little bit more. What was the right call? I needed to see more magic shops, right? Make things free. I need a better card draw. Yeah, so think. So the run looks more like in the base game, you have a space because you took monstrous, so you have to have it. So you take that somewhere, probably first one. You then have draw. You see more magic shops. I didn't upgrade my spells very much. You don't end up taking things like this Shroud Spike, right? This one looks very different. Huh. 
Yeah, I. It's fine. It's fine. We'll we'll call. We'll just let it die here. There was no way we got past this. Uh, this is an interesting run. I had to sacrifice too many resources into killing that dude with what is it? Forever consumed. There might have been a more optimal way of playing that, but ugh, I don't know. Right? It there there definitely was a more optimal way of playing it. Am I going to restart again? Do you want to watch me restart again? Try to find the winning line? Ah, <sighs> fine. Last time. Last time. There may have been a winning line here. I think this is a lose, though. I'm going to blitz these turns because I know what they need to look like. But... But, yeah. Like, yeah, everything here makes sense. Whatever. Good job. Good team. Play the turns. I don't get to do anything. I think I do still need to preserve the Shroud Spike. Is it the Shroud Spike? Yeah, don't overthink this. You gotta preserve something useful here. Just play the Morsel down below. I need to draw, I need to incant, it's good. This is too slow of an incanting line. It's interesting. The Self-Infuse would have been stronger knowing the mid-floor play but you would never have known that is the problem. So now I could fix this floor on the middle by three ember forever consuming this dude out, killing the steel wings. That is an option that hurts my incants a lot. Like you have to play this mortal trade. There's just no world around this, right? You have to, period. I think I am gonna just kill this man though, right? That's a lot of damage saved on that floor. Then we eat the 12 here. Sure, but it cleans this up a lot, right? I think you actually probably cleared the floor. Yeah. Lay that engine upgrade on bottom, I'm pretty confident. I need to get that in play. Yeah, true. We're taking a lot of damage in the back here. Okay, so first off, unnamed tome. Crucible extension. Huh. Different draw order, right? Super different draw order. I have the space now, so now it's just a matter of actually seeing a making of a morsel here. It's tough. The draw order just changes a lot, I think. Yeah, I mean, that terrible ice tornado. What the hell? Oh my gosh. Forever consumed, I think we almost kill two. I actually do kill two if I play that. Yeah, I will play that too, it's worth it. So now it's, we just bop, bop, bop. We take a whole truckload up here, but we're not dead. And now it's just show me, yeah, just show me a miner. You kindle one, kindle two, making of a morsel. We draw into something. We shroud spike up to 350 for sure. Is 350 even enough? I'm adding what? 180 damage here. He takes that's 500. He still kills me. Are we serious? Hold up, hold up, hold up. He still bodies me. Okay, that's... What? What do you mean? So, if I play two Ember, I give up four procs of this six. That's 24 attack, 24 life. I think that matters enough. I'm basically gaining 26 damage off this Crystallis by playing it on this man. He has one... The 690... And he takes an extra 180 here off this. Technically a little more. I guess you can play the preserve, right? You do what? Preserve. We preserve a dead way. I don't feel like drawing it. I'm always playing the immortal trade. Sure, sure, sure. Fine. So he's taken... Right. He takes... 
let's see, let's do the math on this. 575 plus 115, he's taking 347 because my damage sucks. He has 343, he takes 30 from the spike. Okay, he takes 180 from the spike charging up Penumbra, and then he takes 12 from the incant. 121, he hits me four times. I'm not dead, actually, unbelievably. So I should do this because it is the most likely chance that I actually win the combat. Yeah, 121, one, two, three, four. It's a shame, but this might actually be okay. Or I could just still die, you know, that's also entirely possible. Let's play to our outs by hopefully drawing something here. Hey, forever consumed. That's in fact, exactly the card I was hoping to draw. It's a free hit. All right, well, we still die. <laughs> You get the spike, you still die. Because, you know what? It's Penumbra. What were you expecting? So what did I need to click instead? What did I need to click? I needed to click that stupid furnace tap. And you know what? That furnace tap actually probably would have been the line in the base game too. The other thing that would have been the line, I probably would have seen a perils of production in this run because the perils is not in the base game in the mod common pack, right? It's an uncommon here. Man, the card RNG is so different. You know what? Send it, we're dead. I'm over this. We, we have lost. Goodbye. Good, goodbye. It's okay, fine. I'm, I'm done trying. This is an L. We'll take the L here. It was all about that furnace tap, yeah? Yeah. <sighs> the mod, the mod. I don't even think I did anything particularly wrong. I just did not identify the line correctly there. Let's hit the run summary and talk it through. Sad. All right, so what I did here did not work in the mod is the big takeaway here. And what did I do here? I attempted to use frontline monstrous with a slow scaling backline. This is slow for a lot of reasons. I have nothing in the card pool. Nothing in my deck is augmenting the scaling. There's no rage generators in here, right? Nothing makes them faster. And I have a defensive infusion. This is essentially, this is very similar to just incanting a base Siren of the Sea or something. Not hitting the multi-strike hurt a ton, right? I had the opportunity to dupe it at the end, missing it in four shops. I don't even think I overcommitted those, the thing, right? For what I was trying to do, I was always going to look at those dupes anyway. So you wanted, and I had the Pyrestone housing. So no matter what, you wanted upgrades in the Sirens. Now, those Sirens didn't end up seeing anything good, sadly, but it is what it is. The, the, this should have gotten there if I'd been playing correctly. But it was it was the loss here is strategic, not tactical. I like describing it that way because think about it like this. Tactical is I messed up in a combat and lost. Usually when I take a lot of damage in the base game, it's because of a tactical misplay that I make as a result of moving too fast because I'm recording for YouTube. But in this case, this is that's not what happened here. This was completely a strategic error. I was thinking, hey, I can take these Kindles and try to lean into a big X coster, a big Prismal Dust for Patient or a big Shroud Spike. But really, the Shroud Spike, it doesn't represent enough damage on the floor. It was enough to skate by Patient and take zero, but you just get absolutely sandblasted by the Divinity because I'm not hitting 600 HP numbers. How am I doing 600? My stupid sirens are doing something like 80 damage by wave six or whatever it was. There's no world that you get through that, right? No chance. It's especially worse because I just wanted to draw power to pull out a ton of cards, right? 
even though I have seven card draw, I, I don't have the ember to play everything. I'm leaving a lot of cards on the table. There's a lot of problems here, right? You're competing. I should, if I had been able to take, like, think about this in a different way. If I had taken an ember instead and just stick Penumbra on a different floor, right? He goes downstairs and then upstairs, you just protect the front siren with something. And instead you just incant the hell out of the floor. I then no longer need the Light of Sarah if I could take the Ember. And then at that point, I have more ammo to play more of these units out, right? Just in general. Yeah, I didn't see enough OP relics either. There's a lot of, I mean, a lot of things I could have seen that would have helped, right? That line without Penumbra in front really likes seeing anything like Chain of Gems or something like that. We did not end up seeing that. So... It's very interesting. This is a this is a very good loss for me in the mod because it's all a strategic failure. And I'm very interested in that. So good lesson learned. The big lesson learned takeaway here is that this ramps way too slow. And I do not I did not prior to this run have enough experience playing it this way. It's interesting because when you think about how many games I've played at the base game, the number is really, really big. And a large part of my success in the base game as a player is because of sheer raw number of hours of practice. When I look at a line in the base game, I go, this wins. Or I go, this doesn't win yet. Or I go, this never wins. I, and I'm extremely confident that I can make that claim and feel good about saying that and being correct. In the mod, I looked at this early on and I said, does this get there? You remember, go back and look at me asking that early on. And I said, probably. And it, a big challenge is I don't have the time to think it through. I also don't have, because I'm not spending, what, 40 minutes me doing extrapolated math or something. No way. You're not going to watch that and I'm not going to do it. So it's fine. But... Yeah, very interesting. So I, I, there's no way I knew at that time, and now I do. You can't do this frontline penumbra shenanigan nonsense. It doesn't work. I needed to be more aggressively scaling things, right? An alternative that I think might have won is if I had self-infused the siren instead of playing the armor into it. That, I think, maybe would have been more obvious to me. Should have maybe been a, it should have maybe been a bigger consideration for me. I did see the second nameless siren. It slowed my scaling a lot to only have the one. That's fair. Double my scaling speed. That's probably that doesn't, it doesn't double it though, right? It's just literally plus one rage. It's an extra fifty percent. It's okay. It might not have gotten there anyway. I mean, obviously, with how defensive our stupid upgrades ended up being, it is what it is. But yeah, it's tough. I don't know. That might have been the better line, obviously, in hindsight. But that's yeah, interesting. I'm interested in your thoughts. If anyone thinks they saw they saw something that I missed strategically, like a card I should have taken. The ones that stand out to me are like Furnace Tap. But I also think Furnace Tap didn't make sense for the way I was playing this run. Though obviously in the base game, we click Furnace Tap here every time, right? Just absolutely. But, but yeah, fair enough. It is an L. You hate to see it. And so yeah, I will uh, let you go there. Brings us back to again, zero win streak. I'm feeling bad on the mod, feeling bad on the mod, but you know, it is what it is. I feel like I'm still learning, which is good. I like feeling like I actually have something to learn in this game. It's one of the nice things about playing modded in general. And I'm going to like diverge a little bit on the discussion here and talk about that because I think if I was only playing the base game, this would get old pretty quick, right? I'm only playing a thing I feel very confident in. The mod forces me to think a little differently and messes me up. And it feels good to feel like I don't know what I'm doing in some circumstances because it forces me to contemplate and consider the options. So I like it. I'm having a lot of fun. Anyway, I'll let you go now. So, hey, thanks a lot for watching this. I really appreciate your time. As always, oh, I got something in my eye. Oh, 
not as always never do that oh no uh, as always give the video a like or a dislike if you want you can subscribe to the channel if you want to see more hopefully me winning not losing and stay tuned for what's next take care folks